Hi friends, this is Miss Stacy from the Youth Services Department of the Fayetteville Public Library, and this is Preschool Storytime for ages three to five. Let's sing our hello song. We wave and sing hello, we wave and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. We clap and sing hello, we clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. We wink and sing hello, we wink and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wink and sing hello. Good job, friends. Today's story time is about horses. You can see I've got a couple horse friends joining me. And if you wanted to say horse in American Sign Language, what you do is you put your right hand up against your head like this. Make sure these two fingers are down and these are up. And we're gonna pretend like this is the horse's ear and the ear is gonna flick away a fly by going. That's how you do horse. Horse. Good job, friends. Our first story today is called Cowboy Ned and Andy by David Ezra Stein. <laughs> Cowboy Ned and his trusty horse Andy were driving their cattle along the edge of the desert. They rose before dawn and woke the cows. The day grew hot. They moved in a long train over the dusty earth at noon, they drank from a cool river. When night came, they were one day farther from home. Cowboy Ned wrapped his poncho tight in the evening cool. Andy munched his oats. Ned stared at the faraway hills and sighed. Tomorrow is my birthday, Andy. I'll be another year older and no one is around to celebrate. I miss my sister, Nedna, my brother, Nedrick, and my mother, we just call her Ma. Well, I'm glad you're here, Andy. Good night. He quenched the campfire and they lay down in the dark and quiet. Andy tried to sleep, but he couldn't. Something was bothering him. Tomorrow is Ned's birthday, he said to himself, and the best thing to have on your birthday is a birthday cake. Ned needs a birthday cake, and I'm going to find him one. And, he decided, I'd better find one now before he wakes up. As quietly as he could canter, Andy slipped away from the campsite, and soon he was alone in the desert. On the breeze, he heard a shrill song. It was a cricket singing on a rock. Good evening, said Andy. And would you have such a thing as a birthday cake? I need one for my friend, Cowboy Ned, so he can have cake on his birthday. No, said the cricket in a wispy voice. All I have in the world is my song. And he went on singing. Andy walked on. It was cold and clear and the moon was out. Suddenly, two big eyes shone from the darkness. It was an owl who sat on a cactus. I saw you coming a long way off, said the owl. What brings a young horse like you into the desert at night? I'm looking for birthday cake for my friend Cowboy Ned so he can have cake on his birthday, said Andy. I can see far and wide, said the owl, from the rising mountains to the rolling prairie, and I have seen no birthday cake in this desert. Farewell. And he closed his eyes. Andy walked on. He was far from camp now, and it seemed that dawn was close at hand. Oh, how I wish I had a birthday cake for my friend Cowboy Ned so he could have cake on his birthday, said Andy. Just then, a voice came from the dusty rock below. 
Who's that cluttering around in the sky? It hissed. It's me, Andy, the dapple gray steed, said Andy. He looked down to find a scorpion at his feet, surrounded by stones. What do you want clopping around here, you great, great four-legged clod? asked the scorpion, not too politely. I'm searching for a birthday cake for my friend Cowboy Ned, so he can have cake on his birthday, said Andy. I have no birthday cake around here, snipped the scorpion. I have only my stones, stones and dust, and I thank you to go away and let me get back to counting. Well, that wasn't very nice, was it? He's not a nice scorpion. I'm very sorry to bother you, sir, said Andy, backing away. It's just that it's nearly dawn, and I'd hoped. Well, if it'll help you leave any faster, interrupted the scorpion, you might go ask the old cowboy who lives on the hill. I nested in his boot once on a cold night. Scurry past the big boulder where the moon sets, and you'll find him. He scuttled away under a stone. Alone once more, Andy walked on. It was the time of night when all is still. There was no wind and no sound, but his own four hooves on the sand. A little while before dawn, Andy found a house. Just outside was a man as old as the hills. That's old. Playing the banjo. Good evening, sir, said Andy. Or morning, as it may be, he added a bit nervously. After a long pause, the old man spoke. His voice was soft like hooves on sand and owl wings and the movements of dust. What is it that you want, my friend? He asked. I'm searching for a cake for my friend, Cowboy Ned, so he can have cake on his birthday, said Andy. I have no cake, said the old cowboy. Out here, there would be no one to share it with. Andy sat down in the dust. All I wanted was to give my friend Cowboy Ned a birthday cake so he could have a happy birthday, he said. But now it's too late. A cake, the only thing that would make Ned happy? Asked the old cowboy. Andy thought. He thought of a little house out in the desert and stacks of rocks and wind and the campsite far away. No, he said. A cake is very nice to have, but the best thing to have on your birthday is a friend to share it with. I should never have left. A horse doesn't leave his cowboy halfway down the trail. The old cowboy smiled at Andy. Sounds like the best present you can give Ned, he said, is to be with him on his birthday. Now go to your friend before dawn. Andy hurried back past the scorpion stone and the owl on his cactus and the cricket who had fallen asleep and was still singing himself a lullaby. And as he went, he watched the sky until he saw an edge of it grow pink. Then, still gazing upward, he began to gallop east, racing the dawn to be with Cowboy Ned on his birthday. At the campsite, he found Cowboy Ned and all the cows waiting for him. The sun was coming up. It was Ned's birthday. Cowboy Ned hugged Andy and Andy wished him a happy birthday. And all the cows sang a birthday song in their low and gentle voices. And somewhere nearby, a banjo joined in. The end. All right, friends, that was a fun story. Now let's sing a song. 
This one's called, I gave my horse an apple. I gave my horse an apple and she gave me a nay, nay. I gave my horse a carrot and she moved her head this way. Can you do it? Like a horse. I gave my horse a sugar lump and she gave me a big smile. Are you smiling? <laughs> and then she took me for a ride for more than half a mile. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. I gave my horse an apple and she gave me a nay. What's nay? Nay! <laughs> I gave my horse a carrot and she moved her head this way. I gave my horse a sugar lump and she gave me a smile. And then she took me for a ride for more than half a mile. <laughs> Good job, friends. Our second book today is called, Are You a Horse? by Andy Rash. Today was Roy's birthday. His friends made a cake and gave him a great big birthday present. I like getting presents. What's this thing? Roy asked his friends. It was a saddle. And luckily it came with instructions. One, find a horse. Two, enjoy the ride. Roy wasn't sure what a horse was, but he couldn't wait to try out his new saddle, so he went out to find one. The first thing Roy came to was Squeaky and Rusty. Are you a horse? He asked. Nope, I'm an old wagon, said the wagon. A horse is a living thing. Next, Roy came to a tall prickly thing. Are you a horse? He asked. I bristle at the thought. I'm a cactus, said the cactus. A horse is an animal. Roy has no idea what a horse is. Is that a horse? After that, Roy saw a wiggly hissing thing. Are you a horse? He asked. Oh, slicks. I must said the snake. A skittery, pinchy thing ran sideways in front of Roy. It had plenty of legs. Are you a horse? He asked. A horse. I'll pinch you good. A horse is friendly. I'm a crab, said the crab. Now go away. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Roy saw a climbing bug-eyed thing smiling at him. Are you a horse? He asked. I can be green or brown or purple, it said. But can you be a horse? Roy asked. No, but a horse can't change colors like me. I'm a chameleon, said the chameleon. See, they're different colors. You've got purple ones, orange ones, green ones. That's pretty neat. Roy came to a tree with a feathered hooding thing on its branch. It didn't turn green or brown or purple. Are you a horse? He asked. Who, me? Indeed not. A horse doesn't lay eggs. I am an owl, said the owl. Roy saw a fat snorting thing rolling around in a mud puddle. He didn't see eggs anywhere. Are you a horse? He asked. Oink, not me. A horse is clean. I'm a muddy, muddy pig, said the pig. <laughs> Roy spotted a furry upside down thing hanging from a branch. It looked pretty clean. Are you a horse? He asked. A 
horse is very, very fast. I am a sloth, said the sloth. And look at the pictures here. All that time it took the sloth to say one sentence, it got night, it became dark. <laughs> That's a long time. Look at Roy on him. <laughs> Next, Roy saw a romping, growling thing. It was very fast. Are you a horse? He asked. Grrr! A horse eats grass. I'm a man-eating lion, said the lion. Are you a man? The lion asked Roy. No, said Roy. <laughs> I'm a cowboy. And Roy ran away as fast as he could. I think I'd run too. <laughs> After that, Roy came to a quiet black and white thing eating grass. You must be a horse, said Roy. I'm not a horse. I'm a zebra said the zebra. A horse doesn't have stripes. Roy was very upset. Why can't I find a horse? He shouted. <laughs> Just as Roy was about to give up, he met one last creature. What do you think he's gonna eat? What's that creature? <laughs> Poor Roy shouting. It seemed like a lively animal. It had legs and was friendly. It didn't change color or lay eggs. It was clean and fast. It loved eating grass. And it didn't have stripes. Roy was overjoyed. Are you a horse? asked Roy. Of course, said the horse. Well, I have a saddle, said Roy. Would you like to go for a ride? Yes, said the horse. Look how happy they are. And so they did. What do you see there? <laughs> Who's wearing the saddle? They've got the saddle on Roy. Is that right? Is that how that happens? Look at that. The horse is riding Roy. <laughs> That's so silly. The end. All right, friends. Now it's time for some finger play. This is called 10 Galloping Horses. Hold up your fingers. Are they ready? 10 galloping horses came through town. Five were white and five were brown. They galloped up, up toward the top of your thighs. They gallop down, down toward your knees. Ten galloping horses came through town. <laughs> Good job, friends. Let's do it one more time. Ten galloping horses came through town. Five were white and five were brown. They galloped up toward your thighs and they galloped down toward your knees. Ten galloping horses came through town. <laughs> Good job, friends. Our last book today is called Noni the Pony by Allison Lester. Noni the Pony is friendly and funny. Her shimmering tail is the color of honey. Look how pretty she is. She lives on a farm at Waratah Bay and likes eating apples and carrots and hay. Look what a nice place she lives. Noni the pony likes trotting and prancing and the ladies next door always moo when she's dancing. She gallops and spins and canters and bucks, then kicks up her heels with the hens and the ducks. Noni the pony is shiny and fat. Her best friends are Dave Dog and Coco the cat. I think the dog matches Noni. 
They ambush each other and play hide and seek, racing and chasing and jumping the creek. Look at this path. Look at Noni. She goes, That's quite a path, isn't it? They're running all over the place. Noni the pony is gentle and kind and never lets anyone get left behind. If Coco and Dave feel lonely or gray, Noni tells stories to brighten their day. It's hard to give Noni the pony a fright, but once in a while, she gets spooked in the night. Do you get spooked in the night sometimes? It's easy to do. When the leaves rustle and sigh in the breeze, Noni thinks monsters are shaking the trees. Look at this picture. What do you see here? Look at real close. Look at that. What's that? Can you see it? There you go. Looks like a smiling monster shaking the trees. That's what Noni thinks is there. So at bedtime, her friends snuggle in for a song. Then Noni the pony sleeps tight all night long. Look, her friends are there for her, so she's not as scared. Isn't that nice? The end. And our craft today is how to make your very own craft stick puppet horse. Look at mine, he's galloping. He's gonna turn around and come back the other way. And you can create all kinds of stories out of this. You can create different sets and backgrounds, and make up all kinds of stories and plays, and you can make other craft stick puppets. So you have all kinds of characters in your play. Here's how you can make your own. I used a couple shades of brown, a craft stick, glue stick, pencil, Sharpie, and some scissors. I started by drawing the rough shape of a horse's head with an ear poking out the top that would fit around my craft stick. And then I cut it out and traced it so that I had two. And then I cut out the second one. After I cut out the second one, I laid it on the darker shade of brown paper and traced how I wanted my hair to look. And then I do one, did one for the front. I cut those out and glued them on the back side of one sheet of paper, and then I glued it to the craft stick. I added glue to the second piece of paper, and I glued it to the first sheet of paper. I added a little dot for an eye on both sides, and then I added a nose and a mouth. And there you have your horse. All right, friends. Thanks for joining me for this story time. Let's sing our goodbye song. We wave and sing goodbye. We wave and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We wave and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We clap and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We wink and sing goodbye. We'll see you next time.